OK. Now let's uh, move on to shifting um, the curve in the upper left hand quadrant. So I'll redraw the four quadrants. Same technique here, drawing the first three lines and then filling in the fourth one afterwards. There we go. I'll put the labels in there. We've got, uh, what do we have here? Stock, construction, price, and rents. And we're going to rotate. Let's pick maybe red. We're going to rotate this curve up a little bit. And remember, it's so it this line starts at the origin, so we're going to rotate rather than shift. And what this rep represents is a, let's see, if for any given level of rents, the price is now lower than it was before. So for any given level of rents, the price used to be here, now it's here. So that must mean that the cap rate has increased, right? Because price equals rents divided by the cap rate. So that shift, let me delete all those extraneous lines, this shift represents an increase in cap rates. Now, in order to draw the, uh, find the new equilibrium, what I'm going to do is uh, essentially split this line in half. And that's how I'm going to start the new line. I'll get rid of that. And, um, and that's, that neat property is a result of drawing these lines at 45 degree angles. Now, as you can see, it's not perfect. It doesn't line up absolutely perfectly, but it's very, very close. And it's good enough to give us... Um, uh, it's good enough to allow us to analyze exactly what's going on. So we see that when cap rates have increased, so cap rates have increased and we see that we have uh, an increase in rents, we have a decrease in prices, we have a decrease in new construction, and a decrease in the stock of space. So hopefully that's clear, and let's go through another example. We'll shift the same curve, but we'll do it in the other direction this time. Stock of space, construction, price, and rents. And so this time we're going to decrease the cap rates. And that's going to essentially mean that for any given level of rents, whereas formerly we were here and this was the resulting price, now we are somewhere over here. And this is the uh, price that results. Let me get rid of those lines and we will draw our new uh, equilibrium by splitting this line in half. So let's see if that works out. So we're going to want to be somewhere along here. Not quite. Let's see if I can redraw that a little bit more satisfactorily. Okay, again, not quite. We don't meet up perfectly, but we know we're close enough. Um, and next time I think we'll get a little bit closer. 
but essentially we know that this is going to be the general region that we're in and it's not terribly important that we've missed the mark uh, by a little bit and we can go ahead and analyze what's happened we see that we experience a decline in rents an increase in prices an increase in construction and an increase in the stock of space okay let's move on to the lower left hand quadrant and we'll start the same way we always do there we go again now these two lines look like they're parallel uh, but there's no real reason that they have to be so and let's remember to label things here so we've got the stock of space construction rents and prices there and okay so we're going to shift the cost curve and let's shift it in this direction here okay so let's decide on what this shift actually means so for any given price level of housing whereas before that would induce builders to construct this quantity now it's only inducing them to construct this quantity so prices must have increased for uh, or rather costs must have increased uh, for builders so this shift in the cost curve uh, represents a an increase in cost and let's see if we can find the new equilibrium what I'm going to do is cut this line in half in order to start this new equilibrium see if that gets us where we want to go and there we go we get a nice fit uh, and we can now analyze it we can say that due to this increase in costs we see that rents uh, are up we see that prices are up we see that new construction is down and the stock of space is down so let's try one final example In the same quadrant and this time we'll shift the cost curve in a different direction okay make sure I have the right color here all right so this time we'll shift the cost curve in this direction and this represents let's see for any given any given price level let's oh, I'll quickly um, label this stock of space got stock of space construction rents and prices and for any given it looks like I'm just about out of time, so I'm going to continue this final example in the next video. I'll see you then.